Hi everyone, welcome to our panel all about battle passes. It's my huge pleasure today to welcome folks from three of the largest games on Google Play to join us today to talk about their battle or season pass. My name is Aaron Hiscox, I'm a Games Partnership Manager at Google Play and before joining the team here, I spent some time in game development at Pocket Gems and 2K Games. I'll ask each of the panelists to introduce themselves shortly, um, but beforehand, I'd like to level set and provide a little context about why we're so excited to have this discussion. So first, some of you might be wondering, what is a battle pass? And to answer that question, we created this slide, which explains some of the common features of battle passes. In summary, a battle pass or season pass is a game mechanic that encourages players to play more to unlock rewards over the course of a season. There's often a free track that all players can access and a paid track which players can unlock by purchasing the season pass and provides additional rewards. Of course, every battle pass is different and you know, hopefully we'll be able to discuss some of those differences during the panel today. And the reason we're excited to talk about this topic is because battle passes have become a common feature across console, PC, and mobile gaming. The very first pass appeared in Dota 2 as far back as 2013. In 2018, Fortnite adopted the mechanic, and following that, battle passes appeared in other popular titles. For me, the key takeaway from this slide is the huge variety in games and genres have been able to leverage this mechanic to make their games more fun and engage their players. And now I'm thrilled to kick off our discussion with our amazing panel. First of all, I'm going to ask everyone to introduce themselves. Frank, do you mind introducing yourself, please? Hey guys, um, my name is Frank Kainborg. I'm the game lead for Brawl Stars here at Supercell. Um, before joining Supercell at the end of 2014, I've worked for about 10 years at Blizzard Europe, providing customer support to World of Warcraft players around Europe. And yeah, now I'm here. Thanks for having me. I'm also excited to welcome Joel to the panel. Joel, do you mind introducing yourself quickly? Yes, hello. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, I'm Joel Joensu. I'm from Small Giant Games, where I work as a senior game designer on Empires and Puzzles. I've been working at Small Giant now for four years, and that is pretty much my whole career in, in games. And David, do you mind introducing yourself, please? Hi, I'm David Du from Fun Plus. I'm working on State of Survival for uh, almost two years. Thank you for having me in the panel. So first of all, thank you again, everyone, for joining us. First up, Frank, can you tell us a little bit about your goals when you and the team at Supercell were designing the Battle Pass in Brawl Stars? Yeah, um, thanks for the question. So obviously, Brawl Stars launched without a pass at all. And we, we, we started like every other normal game, had our regular series of IIPs, etc. But after a short while, we figured out very, very quickly, actually, that our audience was maybe a little bit younger than what we expected initially. And obviously, a lot of these players had played other big titles with a pass element in there. Um, combining that with retention and the monetization side, we thought like, okay, a pass might work really, really well for Brawl Stars. And, um, the goal was really to get the general monetization up a little. So we are, we're looking really at the percentage of paying users per month and day, uh, as well as at the same time, trying to get retention up. So, so really helping, helping both sides, the monetization side and the retention side. Now we wanted to do all of this while still staying very free to play friendly. Um, that's a core philosophy in the team and yeah, that's what we, what we try to achieve with the pass. Thanks, Frank. Um, and there's a follow-on question for that. So you know, Clash of Clans, which is another Supercell game, was an early mover in this space and introduced the mechanic quite early on. Like, I'm curious, you know, what did you learn from the, the battle pass in Clash of Clans? And like, what did you change when you were adapting it for Brawl Stars? Yeah, actually, both Clash of Clans and Clash Royale released their passes earlier than us. Um, because we had to reprioritize things and we were just generally really busy after the launch to global. Um, that for us, of course, was a great thing because it was an opportunity to learn 
what what other metrics we should look for what are the the internal benchmarks we see it's incredibly hard to get third party data from the outside about past performances most companies are not openly talking about these so seeing internally like what what works what doesn't work was really really important for us so um, it established a benchmark and so we had something to to measure against are we doing better than them are we doing worse than them why that might be they also established a price point, which is really, really non-surprising. Um, I mean, their passes sell for about four ninety nine for a month. Um, now, for for us, a monthly cadence was not in the books, so we knew okay, we we are planning to release a pass every eight to ten weeks, and then have a price tag of nine ninety nine. So the the price was informed by it. Um, the the amount of content and the value proposition. And yeah, I think the biggest advantage for us was really that we had an internal benchmark, which really helped us to understand what, what we should expect from it. And once released, we of course then were able to benchmark against the other games and, and say, okay, look guys, we are doing better here. You guys are doing better over there and learning from each other. Thanks, Frank. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pivot slightly. I'm gonna ask Joel next. Um, Joel, a similar question to you. Can you explain a little bit about what your goals were for the battle pass in Empires and Puzzles? Um, for example, Empires and Puzzles is a very different game to uh, Brawl Stars instead of survival. You know, what were your goals for you and the team when you were designing your battle pass? Yeah, so uh, as with Brawl Stars, uh, our battle pass is something we made long into the in the life cycle of the game, so it wasn't something that we had from the get-go. Uh, for us, it was mostly about engagement. Uh, we really wanted to get players who maybe hadn't played some of our game modes to try those out, uh, play them, have fun. And especially what was really important for us was to uh, get some of the players who hadn't taken part in the social aspects of Empires and Puzzles. Our biggest social feature is called Alliances, where you play and chat with other other players uh, so we wanted to engage players into and encourage them to go into alliances and play those events that are only available to people in alliances so how did you push players into alliances with your battle pass well the whole battle pass structure uh, to us felt like something that really works in this context because we get those missions in the battle pass so we just make missions that are specific to the all the game gameplay modes that we wanted to encourage the players to attend to. So, for example, we have missions like uh, kill titans. Titans is a, a daily alliance <laughs> quest in a way where you fight this really big monster together with all your alliance mates. So it was pretty much about uh, the mission structure and the missions that we chose for our battle pass. That makes sense, and it's really cool because actually I think all of the games here leverage a quest-based system to allow progression through their battle pass. When you were designing your battle pass, were you always going to design it around a sort of a quest-based system? Um, what I mean by that is, you know, the flip side to a quest-based system might be something like Clash Royale, where it's predicated on, or based on the number of matches that you play, right? Um, as opposed to completing quests, and that allows you to progress through the pass. So, what was it about a quest-based battle pass that you know that meant that you designed it that way? Uh, those missions that last for the whole season, they are the ones that we really, we really wanted to make this kind of a like a long-term purpose to the singular events and quests that we have, and. It just, it just felt so natural. We really didn't think about other uh, possibilities that much. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, candidly, in um, conversations we've had with other developers about battle passes, but I think the nice thing about a quest-based battle pass is it affords you like, lots of flexibility because you can also adjust your pass during the season, right? You can change the quests as the battle pass is progressing as opposed to just it being tied to... Um, you know, progression through the game, like winning battles, which is, you know, relatively fixed and you can't really change that after the season launches. So being able to change quests, I've heard 
from some developers is like a really interesting um, and helpful tool during the during the season uh, while the season's underway. I guess it also really depends on your audience. Um, in our case, actually, the team was pretty split about the topic. About half of the people on the team would say, "Hey, we we just want that people play the game like like they do normally." Quest might interfere with that and they might change that experience. So we shouldn't have Quest. We should just recognize or acknowledge basically their progress in the game, their regular games, and then translate that into progress for the pass. But then on the other side, there were people on the team like me, <laughs> including me, who were more like, let's do quests. Uh, players want variety, obviously, especially our audience. Again, younger audience. They want things to change. They want something fresh all the time. And quests just have more potential to keep things fresh. And it also has like these, these hidden advantages that it allows us to push people gently in a specific direction. Like play a specific game mode, play with friends, hit play again after you played with random people, um, play a specific brawler, really. Um, so, so it really helps us to to gently guide them and incentivize trying out new things they might have never tried, uh, even like playing with friends. And so, so I think it's a really, really powerful tool. In our case, the way we structure it, that every day you get a couple of new quests, um, and then there's some days where we, we give you extra quests on top of that. All these quests, except for the daily ones, last the whole season, the duration of the pass, so that it also has the advantage that it doesn't matter when in the season you start, uh, you will always get a bunch of progress from the quest system. So actually, even if you start, theoretically, if you never play Brawl Stars, you install the game new, you start buying the pass on the first day you start, in the first seven days or so, you can get almost 75% of progress just from playing the quests. If you would really play every day all the quests, you would have to grind a little, but you could do it. So I think it, it serves multiple purposes for us. I think it keeps the game fresh, it incentivizes people to do the right thing in game. Um, and yeah, it allows us to be very flexible with like the, the time required to finish the pass. We could, we could even, you know, throw an extra quest if we see, oh, people are a little bit slower this season. So we could just generate another quest, hand that out and give everyone extra progress. So it's a very flexible system in my opinion. That's epic. Actually, I'm sure, I mean, David, similar question to you. Um, I mean, I know that you, you have a, a similar sort of daily task space system um, for your parts. Um, can you speak to some, maybe some of like the decision making that happened on your side as you were sort of designing the battle pass? Oh yes, uh, sure. We actually have two types of pass uh, in our game. One is called Wild Racing. It's actually happening uh, for every two weeks um, in the game. So this one, we want to tie it into the daily quest. Um, the logic behind it is the simplicity for the player to understand how do I gain the points um, to uh, fulfill the path. Um, I really love the idea of like fulfilling the path so that it's like, you know, buying a ticket and uh, go to the buffet and you can eat it all. <laughs> um, so uh, for this one, the simplicity and uh, the confidence that the player can actually eat it all is um, the, the, the main logic behind um, uh, why we use um, the daily, uh, daily quest uh, as, the, uh, as, a, as a point. Uh, and for the, the other one, we have the, um, uh, we call it uh, event pass. Uh, it's only happening when we have uh, like a big festival uh, every month. Uh, and this one is really tied into activity the player uh, like you know really do every day uh, to participate in the events. So this one is more flexible. Uh, a lot of players, if they actually are more active with the game, they will gain the points more easily and then like you know unlock the pass uh, more easily and in a more timely manner. And uh, that's why we design it. The pass will only start. Uh, after seven days when the player uh, join, the, um, join the game. So everyone, when they join the game um, at a different time, the pass will not open immediately. So David, what were your goals when you were designing, you and the team were designing the battle pass instead of survival? What were you hoping to achieve? 
Yes, uh, we actually value uh, a lot about uh, how the player can accumulate value in the game and also how to reward the player uh, they, that, that they can keep coming back. So when we're designing the battle pass, the first first priority is that we kind of like, you know, giving player rewards uh, to, um, to their uh, uh, um, uh, uh, coming back, uh, activity coming back. Um, and the, then the second one is that we want to provide the best value of um, monetization in the game. So normally uh, our uh, offers, uh, we call it packs, uh, in-game packs is about uh, 17 times value. I'm actually curious, so like David, you, you were talking about you know, the value proposition in the past instead of survival and you're talking about like you know, as you said, 17 times value and then up to 30 times value. Like, as you were designing the past, how did you how did you choose that value proposition? It's a question we're getting from a lot of developers about like how rich to make their battle pass. How did you decide that that was the correct value offer? Um, <laughs> it's a very good question. Um, like we, we uh, when we design the battle pass, uh, like in our mind, we kind of like want the player to easily, easily figure out that, oh, oh okay, this is the thing to buy. It's a no brainer. So uh, for the value proposition, I think it's like we just going to over the top. Yeah, I think for in, in our case, it's um, our values are significantly lower. Um, I guess, I guess, I guess it's just a different philosophy in in general. Um, while our regular IRPs on the high, high, high end are like five x, like the 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 rule of thumb is more like three x, uh, sometimes just twenty percent extra. Um, so so for us, five x is like reserved for special moments, like talk Lunar New Year, Christmas, a major celebration, and um, but. On the other side, we had the same philosophy, like what, what was just described. We also wanted players to figure out the pass is the thing to buy. If you buy one thing in the game, this is what you want to go for. Now, our pass replaced our progression systems entirely, right? So we ripped out everything we had in Brawl Stars. We just ripped out and we replaced it with a pass. So before that, you get a token by playing the games. The token went then into kind of a coin purse. And once that was full, you would unlock uh, a gacha. And now it feeds the pass. Um, and we we had really like, there was this sentiment that even if you're free to play, it should feel much, much better than what was there before. Um, so we, we made sure that even on the free track, you will get more value than what you got before. Uh, and at the same time, if you're spending money, then then it, it should feel like, great and so we ended up with like 10 12 x of value the curious thing is we're not promoting that so we, are, we don't have a big 10 x or 12 x thing uh, in the marketing assets we're not saying it anywhere in fact so we made it almost like a community thing for them to figure out what is the value of the pass and for for them to have this feeling like oh we figured it out this is really good value maybe supercell doesn't understand and uh, and so so we ended up with this really great value proposition, uh, which which is which is great for the players for everyone really. Um, now the curious thing about our pass is of course our pass is currently not an IAP. Our pass is based on premium currency called gems in Brawl Stars, and we give out free gems in the free track. So that means in practice that every other season you get the Brawl Pass for free in Brawl Stars. Uh, and that that was one of these design decisions which I mentioned in the in the beginning about being very free to play friendly. Um, now our other games, Clash of Clans and Clash Royale, for them it's a direct purchase, so it's different. So we we were like very anxious before seeing the first results. Okay, did we just shoot ourselves in the foot? Is it is this gonna work or not? Um, but but actually the practical reality of things is that. We have a higher share of our players purchasing the pass and the pass generates more revenue uh, per DAU. So I think it worked. And at the same time, our free to play community didn't hate the introduction of the pass. So for, for us, this was really a success. Awesome. Joel, I'm going to throw a similar question to you, mate. In Empires and Puzzles, how did you think about 
setting the like the price and the length and you know the value proposition of your pass that's a good question uh so uh with the price uh <laughs> we pretty much played other games one to know how, how how other people do it in the industry uh, we wanted our price point to be comparable to other games, something that the players are familiar with. Uh, but on the other hand, we want to keep it uh, the price quite low so, so that it would be available to more players. I know that there are RPG games where you'd have like $50, $50 or even $100 battle passes. So that is not something that we wanted to do. Uh, what comes to the length? Uh, we have a two month cadence pretty much and well originally the reason was that we had planned these really cool unique exclusive things that you'd get from each uh, each season of our battle pass but eventually well, we decided not to do that but we still stuck with the two month cadence and we wanted to have a bit of a breathing room for us and the players so that we could do some maintenance and the players could do whatever they wanted for the for the off time. So we ended up with 50 days in that one. What comes to the value uh, of the rewards? We didn't really think about that first. Uh, the, the whole point was to make these rewards that felt like they're worth it, so that the players would feel good. It, it is something that they want to work towards. So we really didn't think that much about the whole value. Uh, in the end, it ended up being the most, <laughs> the, the best value thing you can purchase in the game. So if you compare it to other offers that we have, uh, it's 10 times more value than any other offer or the best offers in the game. So as our goal was for this to be well similar to Brawl Stars, if there is one thing that you buy, this is it. So that is pretty much pretty much how, how we ended up with the value. That makes sense. Since your battle pass has launched, how have you thought about optimizing your battle pass? Have you done anything to improve it or change it? And have you, you know, done any tests that have ultimately stuck? Uh, with our battle pass, we, we have done some optimizations. Uh, as, especially with the first one, uh, it was really challenging to find the right balance for the, for the whole feature. Uh, we, we had, of course, some estimates on how many players will complete it uh, but especially with the first one uh, we couldn't meet that uh, goal that we had set so uh, we, we made made the next path a lot easier when compared to the first one uh, we always wanted it to be challenging so that it felt like something that you're achieving achieving something so now that we made it slightly easier it still feels challenging but uh, it is, it is uh, manageable to a lot of our players, so we are really happy with that. Uh, other than that, of course, we have done uh, smaller uh, adjustments here and there, like, uh, well, with the difficulty, as I said, uh, then we have uh, tweaked the rewards here and there, time after time. And uh, well, one big thing that we actually just added to further optimize it was to uh, add this waller chest to the end of the of the battle pass uh, because prior we didn't have any incentive to the players to continue after they completed completed their battle pass but now finally we have done something about that i'm going to throw this question next question to david if value is is such an important definition of the battle pass david like did you see an improvement in buy conversion? Because it is, you mentioned that the best value offer in the game, was it a priority for you to sort of like see if you could convert more players? Um, and I guess you, the, some context for you is, you know, in some of the analysis we did on the Google Play site, we've often seen that battle passes are a great tool or rather oftentimes the best tool in games to convert new paying users. Um, and therefore I'm curious if you experienced that with your battle pass. Okay, uh, our um, 
bottle op- opener is actually a new hero. <laughs> it's it's happening way way early. Actually, uh, on the day one, uh, when the player make any purchase, usually the what they will do is the second uh, uh, building pipeline. Uh, when they when they pay that uh, kind of uh, 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 make that purchase in the game, they will unlock their first uh, hero uh, named Lucky. So that's actually uh, our um, bottle opener. So uh, battle pass in our in our game, uh, the design purpose is not really to open up. Um, the paying base, but more like to uh, giving extra extra value to um, those players who occasionally pay not that much, um, but they kind of like you know want to make the repeated buys. So that's a little bit different from uh, the other games, which you know using this uh, to serve the purpose of opening up the the base, but more to you know uh, giving back. To those like you know um, our loyal supporters uh, um, in the game, the best value um, they can get. And uh, as for the um, items they can unlock with purchase, uh, a lot of times it's um, like those um, more expensive or more rare items that they usually don't get uh, uh, with other methods in the game. So it's it's uh, it's more like rewards um, in our purpose. That totally makes sense. I mean, like your your game is so different that uh, that totally I'm, is aligned with what I would have expected. Um, and then, you know, I, I guess similar question to what I asked Joel a second ago. Like, you know, since your battle pass has launched, how have you thought about optimizing it? Like, have you have you changed anything since since uh, since you launched the battle pass? Have you A/B tested anything that's ultimately stuck in the game? We do, we do uh, a lot of A/B tests and a lot of changing in the mechanism. Uh, 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 when we start, actually, uh, the the how how do we uh, you know count the points in the battle pass is very very complex. Uh, it's actually a very complex quest system. The player need to click through. Oh, here are the, all the quests I have to do uh, so that I can accumulate the the, the points. When we go through that list, we figure out that oh, actually, those are um, all the um, um, quests are already included in the daily quest. So why don't we just combine them? So make it like much more easier for for um, you know players to understand and to accumulate. It can just go in the background, don't have to take up their mind space, right? So um, for the second one is speed. I think like you know, um, a percentage of player who can complete all the paths is very uh, essential to us. So um, we, we actually um, um, try different kind of like, you know, uh, requirements for the, the, the pass uh, to, to be completed. Uh, we tried a few different ones. And the, the last one I think is pricing. Uh, the pricing is also very important. Uh, in the beginning, we only have one, it's called uh, $9.99. So Joel, what's, what's one thing that you'd wish you'd known as you were going into the designing of your battle pass beforehand, if you could do it again, one thing, uh, <laughs> or multiple things. Yeah. Uh, well, one thing that I I already shortly mentioned was that uh, we didn't have any. <laughs> well, we basically didn't have anything for the players to do after they had finished their battle pass. So. They still could play the missions and they still could gather points, but you couldn't do anything with the points. Uh, it is something we knew about, but then in the end we didn't have the time to implement it right away, so we fixed it later on. But it would have been it would have been great if we could have done that from the get go. Uh, one thing that we did think about when when implementing the but of Valor was to add these uh, special quests that would pop up when there is an ongoing event because we have a lot of events that are not there always they are just monthly things, uh, bi-monthly things and whatnot so it would be super nice to have some special quests for, for those events maybe someday, hopefully that sounds cool, I hope so too um, and then just one, one additional question for you how do you encourage repeat purchases of your battle pass each each season? Like, what do you think about as you're designing the next one to keep players engaged and you know you know buying the next pass? 
or engaging in the next pass, I should say? Yeah, uh, that's, that's a really good question. Uh, when compared to many games, or let's take Brawl Stars for an example. Uh, you guys have the uh, Brawler in the, in the Battle Pass. Uh, we were thinking about doing something similar originally to, to keep the players engaged and wanting to purchase it every, every single time it, it comes up. But eventually uh, we understood that that kind of uh, development commitment uh, wasn't something that we were willing to commit to at the point. So uh, eventually we ended up with mostly having high value consumables that the players can use to get new heroes and level up their heroes. And as our game is in its heart, it is about obtaining new heroes and then leveling them up and using them in battles. Uh, the high value consumables are always valuable as long as there are new heroes coming up. So in that sense, all the items that are there are as rewards will, will always have uh, value to the players. Uh, on the other hand, we also do have some cosmetics uh, like these player avatars that are exclusive to each each uh, season of our Path of Valor. So there is one on the free side, one on the, on the paid side, and that is the only place you can get them. And sadly, if you miss them, then you have missed them. So, so actually, I'm, I'm going to ask David the same question. Like, David, how do you think about encouraging re repeat engagement with your pass each season? Like, how do you keep players coming back to the next season? <laughs> Very great question. Uh, I think the key is that um, the value we provide with the battle pass need to um, grow with the player's uh, development in the game. So a lot of times when the player um, stay longer with with us in the game, um, the kind of like the value and the, the kind of like the items they, uh, they, they, they have or uh, they need to upgrade themselves are growing as well. But if we continue to provide the same value, then the value of the battle pass is going to be more and more irrelevant a long time. So I think that is the key to increase it with time um, with the player's growth along the time to make sure that the battle pass is still something very relevant um, and very appealing for the players to uh, keep coming back and keep purchasing. That's a great answer. Thanks, David. This is the last question. This is a fun one for all of you. Is there any question that you would like to ask the other panelists about like their games or implementation, the thing? You can be as you know, crazy game designer detailed as you like in these questions. Um, you know, I'm just curious to hear like what kinds of things you're interested to hear from each other almost. I actually have one for Frank. Uh, I, I might know the answer based on your previous answers, but uh, I remember when, when your Battle Pass came out, I uh, think that really made it different from others that I have seen was that uh, you'd have a free reward on each tier and on the paid tier it was every second one. How did you decide that that was what you wanted to do? Yeah, that's a great question actually. Um, I guess I guess a base from that was the, the fact that we removed our regular progression systems. Um, be, before the pass a player would unlock about five gacha boxes a day in average. Uh, so there would be a constant feeling of rewards and progression for the players, uh, free to play players. So every day you would have this multiple experience of opening a free gacha and it, it just felt really, really good actually. And we wanted to preserve that. With a, with a Brawl Pass, if we would have skipped tiers, it would just have felt less rewarding would potentially have had a negative impact on retention and and so in our opinion we just we knew the value we wanted to give out on the free side which was slightly higher than what we gave up before and then it was just a question of distributing that value over the track um, but making sure we can give something every tier um, just just to sustain this constant sense of progression cool that's a, that's a great question joel thanks Okay, I'd like to thank Frank, Joel and David for sharing details of their battle passes as part of our panel today. It's been so awesome to have you all and to hear your thoughts and feedback on this awesome topic. I'm so excited to see what amazing updates and features you and your teams back home release next. Thanks so much for joining us again.